In 2010, a family known to be Michael and Christine Barnett adopted a little girl from Ukraine by the name of Natalia Grace. Natalia had major, severe physical disabilities. And prior to her adoption with the Barnetts, she had had quite a difficult life. In the video, we're gonna cover it all because it is wild. She ends up being abandoned in an apartment while she was still a minor by the Barnetts, who ended up legally changing her age here in America to say she is an adult. And not only that, but they believed that Natalia was a sociopath, manipulative, that she was a liar, and that she deserved to be on her own. Not your typical adoption. And Crime Light Channel has a special treat for you, the audience. We've brought on the expert opinion of Dr. Martha Vieira Cristo Barbosa de Silva, MD, a pediatrician and family doctor currently practicing in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I appreciate her knowledge here today shared with you on the channel, considering her experience with Doctors with Borders, also known as MSF. This is a rare and a first time here on the channel Crime Light that we have a doctor's eyes on the case. It is important to appreciate that Dr. Martha has never examined Natalia Grace personally, so all of her discoveries and findings here are based on her extensive knowledge in the area of pediatrics and her personal experience in an orphanage for children with disabilities in Uzbekistan, which it's not Ukraine, but it does share common post-Soviet practices. Dr. Martha, we Thank you for working with us here on Crime Light Channel. I'm Chelsea J. Be sure to take a moment to like the video. Did you do it? Let's go. This is my time, my day, my hour. This is my time, my day, my hour. This is my time, my day, my Natalia Grace was born in Ukraine in 2003, which in 2023, right now, that makes her 20 years old. By proof of DNA, a woman who resides in Mykolaiv by the name of Anna is Natalia's biological mother. When Natalia was born, Anna would come out far later and she would interview that when she gave birth to Natalia, it wasn't easy. From the birthing process to being shown her child, she claims that the doctors groomed her and they told her, you are better off moving on with your life. Leave this child here. It's gonna cost $100,000 for you to give her what she needs. And she says that they showed, they physically showed her, Anna, her child, Natalia. And they said, look at this, just walk away now. You already have another child. They said, you can have a healthy child later down the road. If I were you, I would just leave this baby right here. And so Natalia started her life really rough. Just upon entry alone, she was judged. Her mother was told to give her away. And Natalia was put into an orphanage in Ukraine. A really interesting fact, that a lot of Americans don't know that the Ukrainian orphanages are utilized as dumping grounds for children with disabilities. And oftentimes they just stay there for the rest of their lives. They don't offer these children what they need. A lot of times the children don't get the therapy and the surgeries and the types of things that they need to cope or have a better life to live with their disabilities. In fact, in these orphanages, some of these kids are just barely kept alive. Rolling off that, these orphanages don't care for the children in the ways that, for example, the American foster system cares for our children. In foster care, it is a necessity. It is essential that you as a child go to school. In the orphanages, schooling is a privilege. This is not something that is given or looked out for in Ukraine. Oftentimes it's said that the older kids in the orphanages kind of look out for the younger kids. Most institutions out there utilize the Russian language, but a lot of times they're not even taught any kind of education at all. Because of this, Natalia would come to the States, to the US out here, and she would 
not have an accent and she wouldn't really know the language at all. They don't really take the time to educate these children in the orphanages out there. We'll cover a little more about this in a little bit regarding Natalia and her language and her education level. It just makes the foster system out here in the States come out smelling like a rose, you know what I mean? There is a diagnosis that I just personally cannot pronounce. Spondyloepiphyseal dysplasia congenita. So that's what she was diagnosed with and a rare form of dwarfism. According to Dr. Martha, skeletal dysplasia independent of the specific type can usually be diagnosed by an examination of the patient. The patient is very short in osteogenesis imperfecta. The bones are brittle and break easily. On the other hand, children with diastrophic dysplasia frequently have what is commonly known to be clubfoot. Children with various types of dysplasia can also have a cleft palate and hearing loss. That's just going to give you a little insight on Natalia's beginning of her life. She has all these physical disabilities. She's been kicked by her mother to the side. Sometimes adoption is a good thing, but in this case, it's terribly sad. She was placed in an orphanage where she didn't receive a whole lot of attention or help for her disabilities. But finally, July 9th of 2008, a family from the States come out to Ukraine and they take Natalia home with intentions to make her their own. Natalia was taken to New Hampshire, Massachusetts, where she would reside with this family for two years. And oh, how I wish, looking ahead of me with this story, that this is where the happily ever after begins and it ends. It's just happy. This is the way that it's supposed to be. This is her forever home. They're gonna start helping her get what she needs, loving her, educating her, all the things that she's always deserved the moment she entered the world, just like any child. And it would seem that way because right out the gate, they're taking her to the doctor and they're getting different diagnosis and they're getting her looked into and like, how can we help her get what she needs? July 30th of 2008, she was examined by a doctor and the doctor had a Russian speaking interpreter come in so he could assist Natalia with, you know, what she needed. I just wanna throw in with the language thing here that we obviously know that she didn't get the education quite out the gate that she needed. We now know that Natalia didn't quite have the language completely down because she was barely even supported in the orphanage, but that's what they spoke where she was. There's approximately 20 different languages in Ukraine. According to a 2001 census study, 67% of the population speak Ukrainian, 30% speak Russian. And so you have this little girl, you have the doctors, the interpreter, and you have the new family. And we're all trying to have this big solution here. What's best for Natalia and how can the family help her proceed with her needs? Dr. David Harris of Boston Children's Hospital Hospital, diagnosed Natalia with kyphosis, an excessive curvature of the spine which causes hunching of the back. Then Dr. Samantha Spencer, also of the Boston Children's Hospital, evaluated Natalia Grace and diagnosed her with diastrophic dysplasia and associated musculoskeletal issues, including severe dysplasia of her hips with scoliosis, which she noted was progressive and not responsive to bracing because the diastrophic dysplasia. Dr. Samantha Spencer mentioned that Natalia's hips followed by her knees and then her feet would need to have surgery. There was also a spinal fusion that was expected to be performed on Natalia within a few years. Okay, so we, we gotta talk about this, okay? Because I had no idea. I'm not a doctor. I don't know these things until, you know, Dr. Martha or my research. I am just like every one of you. This is all surprising to me. Okay, so already she's got a long road ahead of her, but thank God that she had this family family that was going to be there to adopt her, love her, and support her, right? It's really hard to say this, but incorrect. They don't end up keeping Natalia. In fact, at just this point going forward, in approximately 11 years, Natalia would be on national television for Dr. Phil's show explaining herself on what went wrong in her life, the mighty fight she had to put up to survive here in the States. And actually, it has nothing to do with the multiple surgeries. It has everything to do with her being judged for having a disability, however. This is a very 
sad story. Natalia states with this particular family that like at first everything was great, but then she says that she accidentally rolled and physically hurt one of the kids in the home when they were tackling each other playfully and she hurt his arm and suddenly the guardian says, I just can't do this anymore. Like that's it, I just can't, won't. And I found this really interesting, but according to the Federal Children's Bureau, 10% of adoptions are dissolved. And this means that the parent-child relationship is legally severed after the adoption is finalized. After this, Natalia was placed with another family by the name of the DePauls. She says once again to her memory that things were great. She thought she blended in. She thought, okay, you know what? This is my forever family. Okay. She starts bonding with the siblings, the new home, the smells, the different foods, the way that people think, talk, their beliefs. I mean, it's it's all an adjustment. Take my word for it. But for Natalia, this is just, I can't even imagine what kind of adjustment this was for her. It has to be like a cultural shock every time that she's being moved around. So she's with this other family and she just wants to be loved. She deserves it. And so she's accepting and they seem to accept her too. She gets close to the siblings there as well. Now it is said because of potentially financial issues, they weren't able to follow through. And I just whew, sink in my chair at that. September 4th of 2009, it's Natalia's sixth birthday. She's looking to be loved. She spent six years of her life trying to find the one for her just to be humanly accepted by a family. And by April 22nd of 2010, we once again ride the wave for a new family to be potentially her forever home. Michael Barnett says that on April 22nd of 2010, adoption by Shepherd Care, also known as Shepherd Care, an adoption agency in Hollywood, Florida, called the Barnetts and mentioned they had a little girl by the name of Natalia Grace from Ukraine. Michael Barnett says, it was out of nowhere that we get this call. It's from an adoption agency in Florida. They said, we have researched your family. We know about you. If you don't come take her and adopt her within 24 hours, we're, we're putting her into care. They tell the Barnetts, you have 24 hours to decide. And this is supposed to be a closed adoption adoption, which it does look promising. Usually that's a good thing. That means that we're closing shop. We're not letting any of the past creak in. We're moving forward, ground zero. Nobody from your past gets to come disturb your peace anymore. This is it. We are it. And that's what it was supposed to be. All they had was the opportunity the offer, Natalia, who was waiting for them if they'd like the opportunity, and two photos of her with a Ukrainian birth certificate. That's literally it. Now for the Barnetts, this ended up being an opportunity of a lifetime. It really was because they were actually supposed to adopt a little girl from Haiti, but in 2010, the Haiti earthquake was a catastrophic magnitude of 7.0, where an estimated 3 million people were affected by this earthquake. 220,000 to 316,000 people were expected to have died in that earthquake. There was like 50 something aftershocks. It was a mess. And due to that, the adoption was no longer something that they could proceed with. Adoptions in Haiti were closed down. Now, I don't even know the situation, I'm just reading about it. I'm just empathizing with it. Like that must be really hard. And I'm thinking about my daughter that I was supposed to adopt out there alone in this disaster and I can't get to her. My heart would be broken. I would be thinking about her well-being and everyone that suffered. Honestly feeling really blessed to be in the position that I'm in, but seeing how I might be able to help somehow with the position of those in need. Well, let me tell you, Michael Barnett and me, we're not the same. I want to give you an idea on the Barnetts beginning with Michael. You know what Michael Barnett said about this disaster? He passively expressed that it was a disaster for himself. Michael Barnett expresses nothing more than sorrow for his family because he calls it missing their window. He says, oh, we missed our window. And I'm gonna do my best to show you the dramatic side of Michael as much as possible because unless you hear the guy talk and you're watching the way that he expresses himself, it's just a lot of hearsay. But once you read his energy, when he's sitting there talking, you get to know he's a little off. So he dramatically expressed that, you know, 
Ah, <sighs> we lost out. It's a little selfish, I think. The earthquake, it made history. But for Michael, he says, his hopes were dashed. The Barnetts, they hop on the offer because they're just crushed, you know? They've missed their window to adopt a little girl from Haiti. So now they're gonna jump on the bandwagon to go meet Natalia from Ukraine. They had three boys. They were looking to expand the family, allegedly. So they go to a Florida strip mall where they call this a really strange place to look into taking on a child. According to Michael, he says that Natalia opens the door and she flies through it and she's like, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy. She is so ecstatic. Michael considered this odd because he said that the other family that had to give her over that couldn't adopt her had barely done that and that he felt like it was a sign of detachment for her to attach herself to the new family. In my opinion, I don't think anything bad of this move. Why would I? I think she's tired of moving around. She's been promised a whole lot. She's been given up multiple times. So she's really hoping this is it. I really don't think that's a bad thing. But Michael saw it as something that was unhealthy. Talk about judging a child out the gate. My God. Take it easy, Michael. She's looking for her forever home. But they don't take it easy. In fact, within the first week, they take her to Disney World. Now that is a hell of a way to introduce a new child into the family. That's like, welcome to the family. We're going to an amusement park. Let's go. It was said that Christine and Michael took Natalia back to their hotel and one night Christine was giving Natalia a bath. <sighs> This is a bit where the Barnetts end up being quite dramatic, in my opinion. When you hear Michael speak, he is drama queen, not a king, queen. I hear my wife, Christine, and she's in the bathroom and she yells, she screams. It's said that Christine noticed that her new daughter had pubic hair. And so right away, Christine and Michael, and he even does this in his expression, they go, wow. Oh, so scary. Really? So it not only took Christine, a female, by surprise, but it's safe to say it took her by major surprise because she screamed in the bathroom when she saw that. Now look, we know that they didn't have much and it was a closed adoption and it was in a very hasty situation. We know it was in a situation that required a decision on the dot really. But right here is where Christine became really skeptical. She starts treating Natalia like she's a stray cat. Like, ooh, what have I got myself into? What have I done? Ah! You're gonna be fine, Christine. But no, she's not. Actually, Christine was not fine at all, you see. She says that she found out that Natalia, the stray cat, had a period too. Now we're really in some trouble. I mean, this is a no turning back point for Christine. This right here proves that she made up her mind that this was not a good idea even though it's not an idea anymore, it's actually something happening. On Dr. Phil, Natalia, and later her new family after the Barnetts, the Mans, they sit with Natalia and they debunk these claims. We'll get into more of that in a little bit. Let's keep going. The Barnetts end up doing what really anyone should do. They take their new child to their primary care doctor, but I mean, listen to that. It's their primary care doctor. This guy plays a very important role in the garbage that comes out against Natalia, and we're gonna get into why, but this guy here, remember this. Then Peyton Manning Hospital, on behalf of the Barnetts, do a physical exam of Natalia, and even though they saw the downstairs hair, the hospital said that she's about eight years old. However, Natalia, at this time, she's six, she's almost seven, but, you know, she's not eight. It's, it's, it's around there, but she's not quite that age either. And mind you, Michael Barnett says that he looked into when a young lady can start her menstrual cycle. He said he saw that it was the earliest of age eight. But seeing as to how Natalia had been through so much of her life and obviously with her physical features, it personally just doesn't surprise me that her body does operate a little differently. Oftentimes, I feel like when people begin to mistreat another person, I, I feel that there's some 
something going on inside of themselves. But let's keep going because the Barnett actually paint themselves to be the idealistic American family. Spoiler alert, they're not. But they do a dang good job at making Natalia look like she's a fraud. The big question for the Barnett's is at this point in time, if they had concerns, right? Like why didn't they within that time frame of taking her back to the hotel for a bath or taking her to Disney World, why didn't they take her back to the adoption agency with these concerns? Like why would they go to an amusement park and carry on and not take care of that right away. By November 2010, the Barnetts actually end up completing the adoption of Natalia Grace. And we know this poor thing has had it pretty hard. Now she's naked in the tub and she's getting screamed at like, Luke, Michael! I mean, the trauma is just just stacking up as the days go on for little Natalia. But in a sense, the adoption must mean that she is loved and accepted, right? This is supposed to be her family. Now she's been through this over and over again. This is it, no it's not. Okay, this is it, maybe. This is it. Late 2010, Natalia even has foot surgery, which again, this shows relevance to the fact that the Barnetts were willing and ready to do what was best for Natalia. I mean, that's how I would feel if I had a need and somebody's like, Let, here, let's take care of it. That must feel like they really care. Well, imagine you come out of surgery and your mother is asking you, who are you? Natalia says that after her surgery, that's what happened. Christine was skeptical of Natalia. That would scare me bad. You know, the kind of fear that shoots down to your feet like needles? Just, it's a different level of fear, you know what I mean? If I heard that after I've been through so much, and I'm also vulnerable because my body has physically undergone surgery, right? This is my moment. This is a big deal for me, but I'm also using my energy to rest and take care of myself. And my mom's like, who are you? I would just instantly lose trust. I'd be like, who are you? Well, let's talk about the Barnetts for just a minute. You see, the Barnetts were not your ordinary, quiet, little, peaceful family. They were loud, proud, and on a mission in life through as many accomplishments as possible. Beginning with their marriage, if you hear Michael speak, he says, we had so much money in the bank. We had dilly loaded vehicles in our driveways. I would buy my wife roses on anniversaries. We were a power couple. It was almost like when he spoke, he wanted you to look at the couple and just say, man, is there anything the Barnetts couldn't do. In 1996, Christine Barnett opens a daycare. In 2005, she founded a place for autistic needs called Jacob's Place because they had an autistic son, their oldest, by the name of Jacob. You barely ever really hear about the other two siblings, and so it's just safe to come out and say that. Like, in the last video when I said the hearts, you know, had a favorite. In this story, you can tell the favorite was Jacob. He had an IQ of 170. The guy was smarter than Einstein. Christine Barnett had even written a book called The Spark, A Mother Story of Nurturing Genius. You see, Christine was the queen. She knew it all. She was so good at what she did that she was out to save everybody in the world. World, autistic people adopting a foreign child. She starts receiving all these different grants throughout a few years, you know, $145,000, $8,000, just to name a few. Christine's friend Don Johns even chimes in and she gestures around the room. This friend is going around the room in Jacob's place and she's crediting Christine about, you know, oh my God, you know, this woman over here, she sold a car. That's the kind of person Christine is. She sold a car. Yeah. For the of every other child with autism. Then Christine goes, oh yeah, well, you know, I want I just want people to have hope. I mean, that is why I do what I do. That is why I would sell my car. That is why I would give up my own retirement. It takes an extreme effort to pull a child out of autism, but I don't think it's impossible and I think every family can do it if they try. I'm not 100% sure what she's talking about. Autism isn't something you like pull out of or fix. And I, I guess I'll never know because I, I'm not supporting the book, okay? After you learn who this woman really is at the core of where her very soul resides, I would expect my audience to use integrity, wisdom, and have absolutely nothing to do with 
anything that she has to say. That's just my opinion. Christine is not this great person that she comes off to be. To me, this is a bunch of boasting. And it it's very suspicious in the first place because Christine never even mentions the grant money. I mean, she was getting thousands of dollars, you guys, for these places, for Jacob's place through Christian charities. But she credits herself. Yeah, that's why I'd sell a car. Yeah, that's why I cashed out my retirement. That's just who I am. In the end of the video, I'm going to show you a post that she just posted like this year. And we're just gonna see her personality. It's yuck. Now, even yuckier than that, just below what that she did to Natalia was what she was doing to her son Jacob because in my opinion she was capitalizing on his IQ and his autism for attention. He's got a problem I have a solution. We should never treat our children like that. And as an autism mom, I don't have that attitude toward my son. In fact, Jacob comes on a docu-series and he admits as he's living in his father's basement, kind of ungroomed, got a big beard and he's got a lot of fuzzy hair and just chilling in the basement. Like one of the smartest guys in the world could have done anything owned a home, been rich. He's like chilling in his father's basement, okay? So that's autism, okay? I'm not judging him. I think he's lovely, but I'm telling you, she took credit for his smarts and she overlooked his needs. And Jacob says, you know what? I tried to go to my mom. I tried to talk about this stuff and she wouldn't hear about it. That is Christine. You see, Jacob would actually become a celebrity. And for Christine, she wanted to be all up on that. She wanted to write a book about it. She made the book about herself. But when it came to his true feelings, he couldn't even go to his mom and trust speaking with her. Hey, this made me uncomfortable. I didn't appreciate when. I wish you would listen to me about. I mean, as an autism mom, the first thing you won't find me doing is closing my son out if he has a voice and wants to be heard. And I'm sure there will come a day where my son's going to express his feelings and I highly encourage that. And if that's the secret to loving your autistic child, then I don't really understand what the need for the big book was. If she can't master that, Nothing else matters, in my opinion. I can tell you with confidence, Christine and I, two autism moms, we are not the same. I have nothing in common with Michael, and I have nothing in common with Christine. And that's a compliment to self. I just see a lot of red flags. God bless my opinion. God bless Jacob's testimony. I really want to keep this on Natalia, so we're going to keep going. As long as you know that about Christine, capitalizing on Jacob, then you know a lot. Now, a lot of really bad things would happen to Natalia. Oftentimes, Christine would film Natalia when she was getting questioned. And in my opinion, they did things that humiliated Natalia really bad not only exploiting her to a cell phone as punishment, but they found another young girl that had the same physical disabilities or similar ones that Natalia had. So what did they do? They take this other little girl that's a lot like Natalia and they put the two together in a room and they start watching Natalia. Yeah, they start comparing her and they start looking at Natalia's face and they go, go. Okay, now, okay, do one more time. And they start trying to look at the definition of her bones and her face. And at that point, they scared themselves. They're like, oh my God, look at her. She's old. Whoa. Yeah, this is adding to the pubic hair and period thing. So now she's just furthermore being humiliated by this family. Then they find this idea that it seems when I hear Michael talk, he calls it a good idea to bring in this interpreter that can speak Russian. He's like, oh, you know, uh, I thought it'd be a good idea if I brought in the Russian speaker to speak to Natalia, which with the way these crazy people think, that's just a crazy idea. I don't think I would do that. Michael called that a, like an act of kindness. Like, oh, I thought it would be neat if she was able to familiarize herself with her way of life before us. I just, I have questions. Did you ask? Who is that benefiting? And what's in it for her? These are the three questions I taught myself through studying the last video with the hearts. If you're gonna exploit someone, those are the three questions you need to ask yourself. And it seems to me this was just feeding into the Barnetts. This was feeding their idea that maybe she's not who she says she is. We should figure it out. Bring that person in, sit him down. Let's see if these two can really talk. 
Now, earlier in the video, I told you guys that she was brought here really early on in her life when she was poorly educated from the orphanage. And so it's not like she was fluent at all in speaking Russian. And for them to bring someone in the room and assume so much that she wants to go back to that place in her head and relive those memories, ooh, put me alone in a room with the Barnetts. That is a nasty thing to do to someone. But this fed Christine's ego. I knew it, I knew it. See, she doesn't know the language. Is she even from Ukraine? That's what they were saying. We didn't even know if she was who she was saying she was anymore. I just want you to notice that so far in the story, the Barnetts are not quite who they are supposed to be either. These are supposed to be loving, accepting people that took on someone in need and loved that person for who they were. And so in my opinion, I see a lot of projection going. I'm scared of her. Well, she's probably freaking scared of you too, Christine and Michael. In case you haven't noticed, these people make me sad. They upset me. They would say that Natalia would defecate and urinate frequently on items such as blankets, a couch, and in the car. It was said that Natalia antagonized their son, Ethan, who was the same age that she was at six years old. Now, Michael would interview and say, you know, for my son, Ethan, it was like, walking into a haunted house, having to go into the car with Natalia when she would defecate and try to wipe it on Ethan, which I think it's interesting they are already abandoning facts and feelings on behalf of Natalia in order to make her more insane looking, and protecting Ethan and saying, oh, for him, it was so scary. Again, she came out of an orphanage and had been moved around numerous times. She is traumatized, and this is not an abnormal fact for children to act out inappropriately through trauma. Trauma means that any attention on occasion can be good attention. I can already tell you right now if she was a nuisance to Ethan, why did they not have an adult sitting in the back seat with her, training her, working with her, understanding her? Ethan's in the back seat with access to Natalia and she's antagonizing him, then how did this go on under parental supervision? Not understanding that part. But it's not just that. I mean, there's a whole laundry list of things that they say Natalia did. They said that she was threatening them with knives, that she was hiding knives in places that, for one, she couldn't even physically hold a knife, and for two, these places, she couldn't even reach some of them. It was physically not possible for her. She would have ended up cutting her fingers off or hurting herself before she would hurt anyone one else. The Barnetts alleged that they took Natalia to a therapist who was never mentioned by name and treated Natalia and told them that she was a sociopath and they were all in grave danger. Well, therapists are not allowed to diagnose. MDs can do that, psychologists can do that, and psychiatrists can do that, but therapists cannot diagnose. And I watched the interview where Michael said it was like the fourth therapist that finally understood our family, pulled us aside and said, this is a sociopath and you need to run far, far away. This is not the first time the Barnetts would actually end up saying, oh, the therapist told me to handle things this way. The therapist told me this, a therapist told me that. This is also coming from allegations that their son Jacob, surprisingly enough, the autistic one, he says that he watched his mom actually do things to Natalia that he would question, why are you doing it that way? And that his mom said, well, the therapist told me to, and he admits in an interview that is not possible. A therapist would lose their license if they told my mother what to do and to do it this way. Well, it's the same with the whole diagnosis thing. The therapist diagnosed, license should have been revoked. They said a few different occasions that Natalia tried to poison Christine's coffee. According to Natalia, she says that she was offering to help with chores and that she was moving the coffee and spraying around the coffee. When Christine drank her coffee, she spit it out and she screamed, Michael, at the top of her lungs. And Michael said, that Natalia said, oh, I'm trying to kill you. That is extreme. <laughs> that is so extreme. I don't think I would like sip my coffee and scream. I, I just don't see myself doing that. Do you see yourself doing that? It just feels like this is Christine. 
drama queen. She had to scream when she saw Natalia downstairs in the bathtub the first week and now she's screaming because her coffee tastes like cleaner. Then it was said that Natalia was trying to jump out of moving cars. According to Michael, I mean, th this guy's on film. He's on a docu-series where he actually speaks. And when he's talking, he says, you know what? The car would start moving and she'd just unbuckle, open the door and get out. It's hard for me jumping out of a moving car. When he says that, I'm thinking they're on the freeway and she's like, ha ha, this is the end folks. Click. I'm going out. That's what I'm thinking. But when he says that, you know, the vehicle is like starting to go and she's jumping out, I think she's scared. You guys, I think she is getting punished and judged a lot. And now she's showing that, right? Like in the vehicle, they're like, oh, she was just a nuisance to Ethan. She was doing all these crazy things. How could she do this? And instead of doing what I said, you know what? Maybe an adult should be in the back seat. They're just judging, 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 watching her with the beady eye like she's that stray cat and they just don't know who she is. And now she's trying to jump out of moving vehicles. Come on, man. They had a cell phone video of her. The car was barely going and she was she was you know she was just trying to get out of the car that would have been a really good time to put the freaking phone away get on your knees give her a hug and ask her what's up what's going on why are you doing that are you not in the mood to go anywhere today would you like to practice walking you know these people michael's words had money whatever they needed is it not possible to find a way where that could have been delivered i mean are there ways that this could have been handled better by the adults but instead they're like oh man she had some issues look at this filming her just like waddling out of the little car. My gosh. Christine ended up saying that Natalia was diagnosed a psychopath and a sociopath, and there's no proof to back this up. Christine was hoping that she was schizophrenic, and so it is alleged that Christine said she's schizophrenic and that she hears voices. They said Natalia would spread her feces or body fluids on the walls. This is a sign of stress. This doesn't make her a liar. There was just a laundry list of things that I could go on and on about, but you know, I think it's within Natalia's best interest that we just carry on with the story because we know that the Barnett's simply had made up their minds at this point that Jacob was the good kid, Michael and Christine, mostly Christine, were the heroes, the two sons were the victims of Natalia, Natalia was a fraud. So whatever else they had to say, if it wasn't backed by actual evidence, then there's no way that it can be true. But I'll put a link down below where if you want to see that list for yourself. Look, Michael said in one of his interviews that they adopted someone because they wanted to love someone that was in need, that had been in danger. We know that Jacob was pretty much a celebrity by now. He and Christine were utilizing time together and they were traveling around. And on occasion, the family would travel together and they would take these big family photos and Natalia was not in the pictures. When the family would interview or be noticed as a family, Natalia was not included or mentioned. It is obvious that she was not accepted and she was more than not accepted. She was made an enemy in Christine's mind. Christine went crazy at the thought of this. She created an idea in her head that Natalia was out for her. She, in her head, was making up these different scenarios and maddening herself, trying to find the proof that Natalia was evil. So Christine and Jacob are venturing out. They're doing these, you know, big interviews. They're going these different places. And it's like when Christine would have to come back to her reality, she would just like, ugh, toward Natalia. On April 11th of 2011, Christine took Natalia Grace to Easy Dental for the purpose of an estimate on Natalia's age. Again, and Natalia had already been claimed that she was eight years old by a doctor when they first adopted her. So they've already had that proof from a physical and now they're taking her for the dental records. Well, Natalia was examined and with dental x-rays because Christine swore that Natalia had adult teeth. But records show that Christine Barnett was advised that Natalia was between eight and nine years old. But when you're Christine, you got to know everything and you're not going to stop. 
until you're right. But when you're Christine, you're a control freak. You got to know everything. You've made up your mind. Nothing's going to stop this. Nothing's going to stop you. You are an unstoppable force of evil projecting onto a child that, yes, spoiler alert, she was eight years old right now in 2011. But you're going to project if you're Christine. She's evil. She's unstoppable. No, you are. Christine has convinced herself that Natalia is just not an acceptable human being. And she clearly just feels ugh, stuck with Natalia. And this is when that third or fourth therapist ended up telling the Barnett, oh my God, you're right, she's a sociopath. And of course, Michael and Christine, now we're getting somewhere. Whatever it's gonna take to get somebody to lean into their corner. In the meantime, Jacob is really climbing the ladder. He is really doing well. Again, they're traveling. They're taking a lot of pictures together. They're going to these interviews. Her book is doing really good. She gets another grant for Jacob's place. $15,000. $870. I mean, she is on it. She is a power woman. And again, she's kind of looking at Natalia like, ugh, gotta deal with this again. Ugh, stuck with her. Hey, don't come for me. I don't make the rules. I've seen the recordings around this time of Christine putting a camera in Natalia's face and yelling at her. What did you do? How could you do this? Getting into more of that in a minute. So between 2011 and 2012, according to Christine and Michael, Natalia is in and out of St. Vincent Indianapolis Stress Center being treated for a variety of psychiatric disorders. Now, there is no proof of this other than the Barnett's word. Any assessments or comments by staff were made anonymously. Now, according to Michael, they were told that Natalia was going to need to pretty much be locked in her room. Yeah, you need to get a latch for the outside door. You need to be the one to escort her down the hall. You need to be sitting with her when she eats. Did I not say this? in the car. Hey, you should be the one and sitting in the back with her, but no, nobody listens to me. This family has to take her to a stress center, try to get her evaluated to feed their egos. And then Michael says, oh, it was honestly the worst thing in the world. Oh, I couldn't believe we were told that. I have to help her. But when he says it, he's really dramatic. Like this is such a big deal. This is so uncomfortable and out of the ordinary to take a traumatized child that's acting out, slow down, Create a safe environment for yourself, your family, and the child. And that might mean you're monitoring them. You're helping them. And it really surprises me that they didn't come up with more safety precaution ideas. So Christine says that she raised successfully a genius autistic guy, Jacob. I just, I have so many questions about how Natalia was able to get away with all of these alleged things, such as pine salt in the coffee squirting bleach in the coffee, getting a hold of knives in the first place, being able to jump out of a moving vehicle. All of these things, especially if you're an autism mom, already come with being an autism mom. These things, these habits should not have come as a surprise. They should have been grateful for the opportunity. Oh, I know what to do now. Now I can sleep. Now I can help Natalia. This is awesome. Got it. But of course, this is an inconvenience for the family. Michael is just really like, oh, my God, we've been suffering this whole time. We don't know who she is. So he says, boo-hoo, we haven't taken a family trip in a while, so they decide that they're going to go to a place called Trader's Point Creamery. This was for their son's birthday. This is when they claim right away that they had to sign waivers and that the reason they had to sign waivers was because there was an electric fence that they had to walk down a road and close to. And so Michael says that he saw Natalia's face light up like Christmas and that she started brewing ideas. I'm telling you these guys make things up in their heads. They are mind readers now. Yeah, I know what she was thinking. She was gonna kill Christine. Yeah. And guess what? They allege that she tried to kill Christine. Well, turns out there were a couple of employees as witnesses to the circumstance. When one of the employees arrived, because Christine starts screaming and calling for help, saying, oh my gosh, she pulled me down on the ground. She tried to put me against the fence and kill me. Oh my gosh, she's just always trying to kill you, huh? Sprint it's a little bleach. Oh, she's trying to kill me. There's an electric fence trying to kill me. Well, one of the employees said he ran over there and that uh, Natalia was actually the calm one and that Christine was the one that was throwing a temper tantrum. He's like, little person on the ground, big person throwing fit. Bad. Now, I admit if I'm to at 
all give Christine the benefit of any doubt here. Maybe it would be irrelevant that the fence was off that day because if somebody's trying to do you harm, then that's what it is. They're trying to do you harm. They're hoping the fence is on and they can shove you into it. And that was the whole goal from the get go. I don't believe, and it is not proven at any point in time that Natalia tried to do this, but the bottom line, the fence wasn't even on that day. And poor Natalia, at this point in time, she gets more stories and fabricated lies made up about her and it said that she was taken to a psychiatric hospital for evaluation because authorities were called and this is what Christine said. L now this was LaRue Carter Psychiatric Hospital in Indianapolis. Now the people that are coming forward to say that they saw certain things, they really don't have proper credentials to these allegations. You know, hey, a theory is that they might have been paid by the Barnetts because this particular hospital actually shut down in 2020, okay? But these particular employees, like a couple of them, came forward and interviewed anonymously and they said, you know what? Natalia was very flirty. She was very sexual. She was trying to get with some of the guys in the center. She was manipulative. And because they saw the pubic hair, they actually took her to the wing where adults were treated. And then this honestly just crushed me. It really did. It... <sighs> That she draws this little picture of a house and she says goodbye. She writes goodbye to all of the family members, to the boys, like goodbye, Ethan, goodbye, Jacob, goodbye to the other son. And Michael's like, yeah, we, we decoded it. It means she wanted them to die. You know what? She colored the little house and this is in crayon. She's in the adult wing. She's coloring with crayon and she's writing goodbye on a house. How do these people come up with this shit? She's older now. Things are really bad. She's getting mentally and emotionally and physically abused. She thinks that she's done something worthy of getting kicked away like nobody again. All her life, this is what she's known. She's saying goodbye. And I told you, these crazy people, they made up their mind. She's the devil. She was telling us that she was killing us through saying that. Well, eventually Natalia goes, I would say to hell, home. And by March of 2012, surprisingly, a neighbor calls CPS. Somebody finally stands up and reports something. But this time, they report that it was Natalia who was getting mistreated. And get this, I've said it all along, Christine was the one yelling and throwing a temper tantrum. Yeah, how about that? She is yelling, who are you? To Natalia, who are you? Demanding her, you tell me who you are. Sit down and write down everybody you've ever lived with. Write down names right now. She is losing it. She's just working this thing up in her head. Natalia's the enemy, who are you? Christine thought it was appropriate against the stress center to say, make sure she's safe, make sure you're safe. Christine's like, send her outside on the deck. Make her sleep out there. She's not cooperating. So an officer comes to the door. You know, you can just tell this guy Michael is like a big cheese ball white liar. And the white lies turn into big lies. And this was a big lie. He says that within 10 minutes, the officer walked in the home. He looks around, 10 minutes. What is that, enough time to introduce yourself, ask what's going on briefly, take a look at the colors in the house? and that he knew in that short amount of time, oh, I better protect the Barnetts against Natalia. Yeah, 10 minutes, he knew that. Really? Against what? So he conducted an investigation. Michael says that this particular officer brought a letter of naturalization regarding Natalia and that the officer was completely 100% in the Barnett's corner. The Barnett's alleged that Detective Scott Klaus recommended that they change Natalia's age. Unfortunately, Detective Klaus passed away in 2015, so all that we have left from his perspective is the email that he sent to CPS worker Heather Wilson. On March 22nd of 2012, Detective Klaus attached two photos of Natalia, one of her when she entered the United States with baby teeth and one from 2010 10 with adult teeth. He told Heather, this girl Natalia is a child. And all of my true crime fans here ought to know that if it is not properly and legally documented or reported, then it's safe to say 
it didn't happen. So Michael is doing a bunch of hearsay. Yeah, 10 minutes. He knew she was out to get us. Detective Klaus, this is a child. And at this point in time, it, the idea that Natalia is the enemy is just, it's, it's off the charts, man. These people are so crazy. Now their frame of mind has turned furthermore. Just when you think it doesn't get any worse, it just does. These people never stop. They don't have breaks. They just keep getting crazier. So they decide, oh, okay, we get it now. She is a fraud. And this is a fake Ukrainian birth certificate that she was sent with. So she's an adult with a fake Ukrainian birth certificate. Wow, we're gonna go change her age. We're gonna make this right. Now Christine is what I would think is creating a smear campaign against her own daughter. She reaches out to two previous families that Natalia had a particular amount of contact with at one point in time, and they had a similar diagnosis as Natalia. Well, both families called the bluff of the Barnetts. They interviewed, one family said they backed out of the adoption for their own reasons. They just had a feeling that it wasn't the time, and that feeling felt like a bad feeling. The other one was supposed to adopt, but it just didn't work. So the one that was supposed to adopt, she deals with a lot of kids with special needs. And she says she gets threats up, down, left, right, that it's typical and normal and it's a trauma response. And as an adult, our job is to respond to the trauma with as much patience, love, and kindness as possible. She found it really odd and it annoyed her that Christine was acting like this was a big threat to Christine's life. She says it's utterly ridiculous that this was a cry for help from Natalia. The other family with similar disabilities ended up mentioning that they thought it was a lie, like a huge lie, how Christine was painting Natalia because Christine was trying to say and persuade this family to join forces with her. And she said, oh, you know, Natalia, is taking me down. Natalia is doing all these physical things. She's getting away with all this stuff. And the people were like, you know, uh, speaking from experience, that's just not physically possible. And so they knew she's lying. She just doesn't like Natalia. And you know how we talked about Christine and her little projection issue? Well, turns out the Barnetts actually had a case of DV between the two of them back in 2003, which is ironically the year that Natalia was born. To think of it like that, as Natalia made way into the world, these people were already corrupted. And yet at some point, Michael actually blamed everything on Natalia. He says, if Natalia never entered our lives, I never get divorced. I don't lose everything because the Barnetts actually do. They get divorced. But this is what Michael said. If it wasn't for her, this never would have happened to me and my wife. We had it made before. She comes along and just takes everything from my life. But again, the year that Natalia is born, they're having issues. So they were already miserable people. In 2012, the Barnetts ended up petitioning for Natalia to get an age change. They changed her date of birth from 2003 to 1989. The judge re-aged Natalia 22 years old. As an adult, she is now denied a proper education. As an adult, Natalia can now vote in elections, apply for a driver's license, buy a weapon, buy cigarettes and alcohol, gamble, get married, and if she committed a crime, she could be tried as an adult. So she has access to all of these things that someone with the mental capacity of being an adult has, except she's eight and a half years old. The Barnetts. Yes. She's an adult. She's out of here. She's out of here. She's out of here. Michael Barnett states he and Christine set Natalia up in an apartment, paid the first three months rent, set her up with disability and social security alongside food stamps. Michael states he hired a home health aide for Natalia who billed them for 260 hours. Natalia would end up living in that apartment at that young age by herself for a year at most she was checked on twice a week. Natalia said that the Barnetts kicked her down some food that they wouldn't eat. That was like canned good stuff. 
She says that her landlord would end up having to take her to the grocery store and the gas station to help her. This got bad because she is a very needy child and she does what I actually admire so much. She gets out instead of tucking herself away in a corner traumatized or ending up dead or she goes out and she makes friends with the neighbors. She tells the neighbors, I think that I'm 22 years old. And so they're like, oh, you're not a child, my my. Because she's looking like a child. And she is, but she's been told that she's not. And now she legally isn't on a piece of paper. But she has been in the world for about eight and a half years or so. So instead of looking at her like she was a child, they judged her a bit and they looked at her like she was a nuisance. This is a 22 year old woman that has disabilities and it probably made Natalia look like she had a mental issue as well because she's acting like she's eight, but she's 22. And then on top of it, she's got these physical disabilities also. So she would like run over and harass the neighbors because she doesn't know better. The neighbors even knew whether she was five or 50. This young woman, we know child, but this young woman needed help. She wouldn't bathe herself. She was wearing the same clothes day in, day out. Her hair was smelly. She was making friends with one of the children up the block. What the Barnetts have set her up for is a double life that an eight and a half year old cannot comprehend. She's just doing what she's told. She doesn't know America. This is what America says you are. This is what you are. She doesn't have anybody else. Nobody wants to be her friend because now she looks like the creepy, weird, disabled lady running around bothering people. She's playing with the little kid. She doesn't wash herself. She's super needy and it's disruptive to these neighbors. And what do the Barnetts do? They just keep showing up in their fancy vehicles. Michael now owns a yellow Corvette and Christine drives a Cadillac. You, you know, clearly they can tell that she has needs, you know? They know this, they're just ignoring it. And people think it's so weird that she has a family that checks on her, but they don't even get out of the car on occasion. On top of it, they're isolating her. Like, she's an adult now, but they're checking on her and they're yelling at her and demeaning her and emotionally abusing her. There's a video of Michael filming her saying, where were you? I was driving around the block. They've cut off all her hair. So she's she looks like a little tomboy and she's sitting on the couch with this camera in her face and she's like, you know, like a, like a little puppy dog with eyes. Like, where were you? Who bought these donuts for you? Who are you talking to? They were so mean to Natalia. They're treating her like a child, but they're neglecting her like an adult. Hateful. And she is eight and a half. She doesn't know her rights. She doesn't know this is wrong. This is how she's been treated from the start with the Barnetts. They have stuck a camera in her face and yelled at her and demeaned her since they brought her home because they made it up in their head that she was an enemy. And so now they're going into her home legally and they're sticking a camera in her face and she's just taking it. She doesn't know any better. She's just like politely answering. I'm not talking to anybody. Somebody gifted me those donuts. Sometimes I go for a walk. No, I I saw you. I, I, I went around the corner and you weren't there. Who are you talking to? Well, guess what? You know what? When somebody tells you enough times that you are a particular way, at some point you're gonna believe that. I'm sorry. It's the reality. You are who you hang out with. You are what you put into your body. You know what I mean? And she had been told by the Barnetts that she was dangerous. And I'm sure at this point she snapped and broke and she just called the cops on herself. She's like, you know what? I'm having thoughts. I'm thinking about hurting someone. I'm thinking about burning down this freaking apartment. Neighbors start to pull away from her. And it's said that she started making some really strange sexual advances toward the young boys and even the men in the neighborhood. Eventually, she would just let herself in the neighbor's house and start eating their food. Well, by the age of 14, Jacob, with autism, he was the one that was accepted into a master's program in Canada. And so the Barnetts, they start gearing up to leave and go to Canada. At this point in time, a particular detective by the name of Bob starts looking into the case. Natalia was moved out of that one particular apartment and she was moved to another in a town called Lafayette County. Now, according to Michael, he would later say that Christine purposefully set her here because Christine knew this was a really bad side of town. This is a white trash town and nobody's gonna even pay attention to her. Nobody's gonna notice her. The problems we had at the last apartment, we're not gonna have at this apartment. They put her on a 
second story floor. And the first thing Natalia does is she climbs down the little steps. She runs and she finds a neighbor. She's like, hey, I'm hungry. Can I have a sandwich? The neighbor says, uh, you know, do you need to use my phone? She's like, okay, I could call my mom. I could do that. I need groceries anyway. Hands Natalia the phone. Natalia's like, so... <laughs> How's this thing work? The neighbor takes the phone. She's like, you know what? We'll deal with that later. And so she gets to know a little of Natalia's situation and she is baffled. She can see that Natalia is physically disabled. She is concerned because Natalia is living on the second floor. So she wonders if Natalia is gonna end up hurting or killing herself or she might burn down the apartment and then the other people below her are gonna get hurt. But if she gets hurt, nobody's gonna be there to help support her to get her to help. It was very worrisome that she didn't have anyone there to protect her because even the woman who seems like a real tough badass, she carried a gun with her at all times. She said, this can be a dangerous side of town. And then on top of it, they actually put Natalia close to a neighbor who was a registered sex offender. The guy Bless his heart, no judgment. But we do need to know that because Natalia is an underage minor. The guy interviews and he said, you know what, um, I had a problem before and I was really friendly with the ladies and yep, it happened. And when I saw her, I have kept my distance. He said she was little and I just, you know, didn't want anything to do with it. At times it was proven that there was no food and no electricity for Natalia. I just imagine within myself this baby girl laying in that dark place, hungry, cold, living next door to an offender, just lonely. Well, you know, God was really looking out for Natalia and she had a driving force within her that, you know, if Christine thought that she was the bee's knees, Natalia far passed her up a long time ago. Natalia went out and did what she did. She was a little nuisance. She's running around trying to make friends. She ran into a family that figured out, oh my God, she by herself, she has a family. They don't really come and take care of her. You know what? Come home with me. This woman's name, this angel's name is Cynthia Mann. The Manns took in Natalia. They had Natalia switch over social security into the man's name. They're like, I'm going to take care of you now. Welcome home. And the good news about this part is that this was the beginning of the beginning for Natalia, for good news. And for Natalia, this was the beginning of the end of the nightmare that she had been living. In Canada, the Barnetts, they get a call. They get a call from the GED center that at first Natalia is just missing and then suddenly Natalia has been found and she's with another family. Michael had been collecting off of Natalia's social security to not only pay her bills, that's what he alleges, but we know that she was at times left with nothing and they're not even in the same state at this point. So honestly, how could he know? But then he's back paying himself for previous rent for her off of her benefits. So he, I mean, you can imagine he was like really pissed off when he finds out that Natalia has taken away the money that he's been collecting. And Christine, ooh, she's mad. She's like, how did she find these people? I mean, they were trying to isolate her, you know? They were putting a camera in her face. Who are you talking to? Where you been? And now she's got this like family. They're like homegrown cooking for her. They're scrubbing her little hair. They're taking her in the car. She's having the time of her life. They're taking pictures with her. They're like, you are one of us. You're a person. This is your home now. Of course, Christine tries to get in touch with Natalia. And Natalia was always in submission to Christine's control and hatefulness, as you understand. Christine calls Natalia and she's like, where are you? You're supposed to be at your own apartment. And she starts demeaning Natalia. Cynthia's standing nearby, man. She's a thug, if you ask me. And she picks up that phone and she's like, hey lady, stop talking to her like that. This is when Christine says, you know, dump loads all these lies. You know, she talks to herself, she hears voices, she tried to kill us, all these things. Cynthia's like, ma'am, you're a little crazy. Stop yelling at me or I'm half dang up on you. Okay, bye. Hangs up. Now we understand that these people are simply like miserable people, the Barnetts. I mean, there's no denying it, right? February 3rd of 2014, just as Natalia's life starts coming together, the Barnetts' life starts falling apart. Michael files for divorce from Christine and he goes back to Indianapolis. But sadly, that transition from the beginning of something good and leaving behind something bad for Natalia, that would require the investigation because the mans wanted to adopt 
or get legal guardianship over Natalia. But she's already been adopted and technically she's a legal adult. And so this is getting investigated and honestly it has been being investigated for a while. Now it just looks more suspicious because Natalia has a new family and the family means well and it's starting to make the Barnetts look really stinky. Natalia starts the whole tell all thing. You know what, my family moved off to Canada and this is where I've been residing. Meanwhile, Christine's in Rome and Italy and Jacob's just making it real big and Christine's out there, you know, living her little best life, her little golden life with her son, Jacob. It's not Jacob's fault. I like Jacob. I don't like Christine because Christine is capitalizing on Jacob and we already knew this, but she's, you know, using her son to travel around and now she's divorced and she's left her daughter, but it's all about the fame and the fortune. Okay, see this? Little Miss gonna go save them all, huh? Except her own daughter and her marriage. Then by 2016, oh, how the tables do turn. Michael no longer feels that Natalia was the enemy. Within the same docuseries, by the way, he starts the docuseries by saying, you know what, if it wasn't for Natalia, everything would be fine. We had a great life before that happened. We know that's a lie. It's been reported 2003, they were hurting each other. They were miserable all along, but by 2016, suddenly it's not Natalia's fault. In the same docuseries, he turns on his ex-wife, Christine. He's like, she was crazy to all of us. And he squeezes himself in that category, us. He says, me and my sons and Natalia. And this is where it all starts coming out. He talks openly about the, he calls them the tell me who you are episodes where Natalia was forced against a wall for 10 plus hours with her physical disabilities without food. She's urinating herself, defecating on herself. She's being told, tell me who you are. Christine's losing it. Tell me who you are. Who are you? You get over there. You sit down. You write down everybody's name that you've lived with all your life. Who are you? She's losing it. She has these episodes with Natalia frequently. And according to Michael, Christine was real evil about it. I mean, she would sit on the couch and tease Natalia. Yeah, we're gonna have family time. If you wanna tell me who you are, then you can come join us. Okay, we're gonna eat dinner. Natalia can eat, but only if she tells us who she is. I mean, she is just, ooh, the epitome of a monster. You gotta understand that putting Natalia in a corner to stand on her legs and feet, me alone, I would struggle with that. This was hurting Natalia. This was messing up her little body. She is a child. Like she came to America to destroy America. And by October 24th of 2016, Dr. Andrew, the primary doctor, the only doctor that was in the corner of the Barnetts, this guy, this is when he writes the letter stating that he was in the corner for the Barnetts. Which first of all, he calls Natalia a sociopathic personality disorder, but really he should have put antisocial personality disorder. So red flag one, Number two, is he not violating her HIPAA rights by doing so? So there goes to be a lot of back and a lot of forth between the hate and the nasty of Christine and Michael. I'm not gonna get into all of it. I highly encourage you to watch the docu-series. That was one of my resources, but there were many, many others that I pulled from as well. This story is complex as hell. Let's just say one of the allegations that Christine has not answered for at this time. It's been said by Jacob that he was forced to go pee on Natalia's bed to jab her, to get back at her by Christine. Another resource came forward and said that Christine found another disabled man, and she was trying to get him to come on to Natalia. Just some sick shit. So we're just gonna go right into the injustice that has happened for Natalia. September 2019, Michael and Christine Barnett are charged with neglect. Social services investigation led both Michael and Christine to be charged with neglect of a dependent. Neglect of a dependent causing bodily injury neglect of a dependent causing serious bodily injury, endangering a dependent's life, abandoning or cruelty confining a dependent, and conspiracy to neglect a dependent. However, because of the complications of her age, she was now a legal adult. And so this made it really hard 
to convict these two people because in court, Michael was the first to go. He was the first one that had to face a jury. Michael ended up being acquitted. When Michael comes out, he is sobbing. He calls his son Jacob. He goes, they just knew. <laughs> they just knew they saw I was an innocent man. I don't have to go to prison. La la la. All of his whiny stuff because that's what this guy does. He whines a lot. Well, that's not true. The reason is because they could not use DV and they could not use her age in the jury. And so what happened was Natalia ends up being cross-examined and she's not very good with her responses. And so the jury saw this as a weakness. But the truth was she wasn't remembering accurately because she's really traumatized in these areas. I mean, there's a lot of moving parts for her. And I admit, in my childhood, I get flashes. I don't remember things in a particular timeline. Sometimes those memories come back and I surprise myself. I'm like, whoa, totally forgot that happened. You know, the jury thinks that they are dealing with an adult because at the beginning of Natalia being cross-examined, she was asked what her date of birth was. And legally in the States, she has to say that she was born in 1989 because they changed her date of birth. So her little case was never truly heard for what it was supposed to be. And for that, Michael Barnett was acquitted. It was really sad because Michael Barnett ended up jumping for joy and feeling like he had won a victory. People just feel like if the real Michael had been exposed in court as an accomplice to these crimes, then no, he would not have been acquitted. Not if the jury utilized wisdom. And sadly, based on the facts, Christine factually did not have enough evidence against her for her trial. Originally on Dr. Phil, a gag order had been issued because this did become very national. However, the show was still able to be released and I'm very thankful for that because I, I learned a lot from it. It had been pre-recorded before the gag order went into effect. And I just wanted to put a little photo here of a post that Christine had put out on her Facebook in mentioning that, you know, she knows that the public has seen the documentary and there was some explicit content that was revealed by her ex-husband, Michael, where she used sexual advances to manipulate him and get what she wanted. And I'm not going to get into it because I truly believe that Michael used the documentary to make everything about himself. I do believe that Christine is a real tool. I'm surprised they haven't pulled her book. I do not believe that we should be supporting her in any way. And as an autism mom, that, I, I mean, that speaks volumes because I've done traveled all over the state of California looking for my son to get the best care. And I would be number one in line to purchase something like this if I felt it was beneficial, but I cannot trust this woman in anything she has to say. And I feel very sorry that she utilized her son's fame to make herself look and feel good. Christine Barnett is just a very, very sad person. And it's obvious by how she speaks of herself online. She's very egotistical. I can't diagnose. I would say there's definitely narcissistic tendencies going on here, saying that she'll date Elon Musk. I'm not really sure what world this woman's living in. But Natalia was treated like a number here in the States. And then the Barnetts used her age to manipulate and get what they needed best out of the situation, which was never the right thing to do. In closing, I'd like to give our medical expert, Dr. Martha, some final say here. I'm going to preface it by reminding you that she did not diagnose mental state, nor has she actually seen Natalia. And in order to actually do so, she would need to see Natalia. But considering that Dr. Martha is international and we are dealing with an international adopt in a country that has had problems with accuracy of birth certificates. Dr. Martha mentions that if she had been one of Natalia's doctors, she would have considered her chronological age to be around 11 years at most. Besides the pubic hair, there actually was nothing indicating that Natalia was an adult. And that's the sad fact of the story is she was mistreated for absolute nothing. But God bless the mans, you guys. Natalia is in 
in safe hands. She is using her voice and she is said to come out with a documentary by next year called Natalia Speaks and I am totally going to support that and I really hope you guys do as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this story. It was a really big deal to me to get it out and I will be seeing you all next week for another case. Take care loved ones. Be blessed. Crime Light out. Power. This is my new era.